Credit Karma has been lying to you. Millions of Americans have been convinced that Credit Karma is their real credit score, and in fact, it is not. So in today's episode, we're gonna take it back to the basics where it all starts with your credit score because I feel that this is still a growing problem in America that Americans truly do not know what their real credit score should look like or where to find it or who to trust. It is a huge growing problem that has never been addressed. I truly believe that you should never use Credit Karma and you should delete it from your phone immediately because it is the biggest misleading app that has ever been put out in American history. And let's be honest with each other. The number one reason why people use Credit Karma is because it's free. Americans love everything that's free. I'm not gonna lie, I like anything that's free also. I don't see a lot of free, but I'm just saying, everyday Americans, including myself, love anything that's free. So we have fallen into this trap to believe that Credit Karma is a good tool to help us that the Credit Karma score that we see is truly what lenders are going to use. When in fact, more than 90% of lenders are going to use some type of FICO score. And the shocker is, of course, they don't teach us this in school. They don't teach us the difference between a Vantage credit score, which is what Credit Karma is, and a FICO score, which is what lenders are actually looking at. Pay attention to what I just said. Credit Karma is a Vantage 3.0. And unfortunately, you're going to be hard pressed to find any lender out there that is actually going to pull your credit scores from a Vantage 3.0 scoring model because no lender wants to use it. It is unreliable and it uses a different algorithm compared to FICO. All right, hold up, let's back it up a second. Now there are a few far and in between places like smaller credit unions that do use use a Vantage 3.0, but it's very, very rare. Now, some of those buy here now, pay later places, they also use the Vantage 3.0, but all of the major big players in the game, all the lenders that you wanna do business with are going to be using some type of FICO scoring algorithm. So this video is going to be one of the most important videos that you're ever going to watch about your credit score. I feel like people don't talk about it enough because I believe it's super important that you know exactly what credit score any of these lenders are going to be looking at. If you're trying to apply for a car, if you're trying to apply for a credit card, or you're trying to look for a new home, I want you to be 100% certain what exactly your credit score truly is for that specific industry. Because you can get a million free credit scores all across the internet because their number one goal is to get you into their ecosystem to sell you or market something to you so you'll eventually buy or get some type of credit card from them. So pay attention to these words that I'm about to say very carefully. There is there's no free credit score that is your true credit score that lenders see. I know that sounds crazy, and when I say this, people get upset. It's like, this is not fair. Why should I have to pay to see my credit score? It's not my fault. I didn't make the decision. If it was up to me, credit scores would be 100% 100 free, but unfortunately, they're not. I always bring proof so you can see exactly what I'm referring to, and we always have a reference because if I'm just telling you something, I have to back it up, right? So I'm gonna show you exactly the major credit score differences that I saw on my credit reports when I pulled my Credit Karma score about a few months ago because I did another video similar to this one and what it actually looks like compared to my true FICO score that lenders use. But before I show you this, I wanna be very, very clear about something. What you see on my credit score is gonna be completely different than what you may see. A great example, I have more than 30 plus accounts on my credit reports because I have more than 40 something credit cards and then plus all of the other loans that I have that are still open. And my wife only has maybe five, maybe six accounts on her credit report. So you're gonna see a big difference in my credit score, but then you look at her credit score and it's not such a big difference. Difference, if I could say that properly. So Sorry. But I want to be really clear on that and not mislead you so you truly understand that everyone is going to be different because everyone has a different credit profile. There are no two credit profiles that are alike. So there's no way that I can say that, oh, mine is 100 point difference and yours is gonna be. No, you could only be maybe five points, maybe 20 points, or maybe you are 75 or a full 100. I've even seen a 200 point difference from Credit Karma to FICO. Now, first, we're gonna look at my Equifax credit score on Credit Karma. It is right now a 642 per Credit Karma. 
which is crazy insane. If we look at my FICO score eight from Equifax at the same exact time, it is a 780. Now my scores usually fluctuate between a 780 and a 798, 799. They sit right below an 800. But right now I'm carrying 10% utilization. So if I paid off completely all of that 10% of the balances that I'm carrying without knowing that, guess what? My score is gonna rise way past the 800 mark. But that is insane. That's a 138 point difference between Credit Karma and my FICO score. Now let's take a look at my TransUnion credit score at Credit Karma. It is also a 642, which makes no sense whatsoever. This is crazy. And then of course I look at my FICO score and it is a 798. Now remember, I'm carrying a 10% utilization, so I would be well over the 800 mark with my FICO score, but with TransUnion, that is is a huge difference again. We are seeing right now in front of us a 156 point difference between Credit Karma and my FICO scores. Now I want you to remember and pay attention to this. Credit Karma is hooked up to your actual credit reports. So it should know exactly what credit cards you have and what credit cards you could possibly be approved for if you meet the criteria that that credit card is requiring. So what I did is I pulled up the American Express Platinum card. I wanted to see what it would say. Now it says your chance of approval is fair. Apply before credit score impact. Now it's crazy that it's saying that my chance of approval is fair for the credit card that I already have. I have the platinum card. So it should actually say your chance of approval is excellent, but of course it doesn't say that. Now I also pulled up the American Express gold card because I wanted to see exactly what it would say also. Now here I found it interesting that it said your chances of approval is good, so apply before any credit score impact. And of course, I have the actual gold card also. Well, it's the rolls gold, but it's the gold card. I just chose the rolls gold color. But again, it should know that I have this car. So it should be telling me that my chances of approval are excellent. And of course it does not. But what I did find interesting was the credit cards it tried to push me towards. It tried to push me towards the credit cards that it said I had an excellent chance of approval. Let's see what credit cards those actually were said that my chance of approval is excellent for the Destiny MasterCard cashback rewards with an annual fee of $125 per year. Now, I have high tier credit cards and I've never heard of this credit card, the Destiny MasterCard, and I'm willing to bet money that this is another subprime credit card. Now, it tells you it's a subprime credit card when the reward rate is 1.5% cash back and it has an annual fee of $125. Again, another great example have Credit Karma is manipulating whatever algorithm they're using to push you to crappy credit cards. But this next card takes the cake. Credit Karma recommended that I get the Indigo MasterCard Cashback Rewards card, which is one of the worst credit cards that anyone can get. Indigo is hands down the card that you want to stay away from. It said the Karma guarantee, you'll be approved or Credit Karma will pay you $50. You're gonna pay me $50 and guarantee that I'll be approved for a crappy credit card? Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and pass Credit Karma and it's gonna come with an annual fee of $75 for the first year and then $99 thereafter with 1.5% cash back. Again, they are pushing the narrative to crappy credit cards. When I was about 26, 27 years old, a lot of my friends told me, hey man, you need to use Credit Karma. Credit Karma will tell you what credit cards you can get and what you're gonna be approved for. So you really wanna use it. It's really awesome and it's free. So of course, that's exactly how I got this crappy credit card, this Credit One. Now this Credit One credit card has been turned off and not active for years now, but I've kept it around to remind myself where I started from and to never ever use Credit Karma again and teach everyone out there that Credit Karma is the biggest scam in American history. But Credit Karma is not the only one. That's the crazy part about this. Stick with me here because we're almost to the part where I'm gonna break down every credit score that you need to pay attention to, the credit scores that lenders are gonna see. I'm gonna show you each one of those and where to find them. But first, I wanna show you how there are a lot of banks that are giving you free credit scores and those are truly not the credit scores that lenders use because remember, we are looking for a FICO score. That's all we care about. Anything Vantage can be thrown in the trash. It's 
basically useless. Don't come into the comments saying, oh, you know, Avantage 3.0, is it's a good mark to tell you exactly where you stand at. You can use it for free. No, it's a waste of time and energy. Don't waste your time using that when it's misleading you. Don't walk into a dealership and go apply for a car and then you get declined and they're like, uh, well, I mean, um, my credit card my score told me I was a 725 and then get laughed at by the dealership because they love to laugh at people that say things like that because everyone knows that credit karma is not your credit score that lenders use. Now, one of the biggest banks out there, Chase Bank, is gonna give you a free credit score. It's called the Chase Journey, the Chase Credit Journey, sorry. And if you scroll down to the very bottom of it, it says right there underneath the score, it says Vantage 3.0. So the credit score that Chase Bank is giving you is not a FICO score, unfortunately. Now let's go over to Discover Bank. Now Discover Bank is in fact giving you a FICO score. They're telling you exactly that. That is a FICO score and they're giving you all of the facts of your credit profile and they're breaking it all down for you so you can see exactly what your credit score is. So Discover is giving us our FICO score eight. That's exactly what we're looking at. Now this next one is the biggest disappointment in my life. Navy Federal, one of the biggest credit unions out there, one of the most popular ones, is showing you a Vantage 3.0. Now they give you what's called Mission Credit Confidence, but again, they're giving you a Vantage 3.0 and they don't even use a Vantage 3.0, which is mind blowing to me. It's like, okay, so you don't wanna pay to give us our FICO scores, but you use a FICO score, but you're gonna show me a Vantage credit score. That makes no sense. Now let's go over to Citibank. Now Citibank is in fact also going to give you a FICO score, not a Vantage score. Shout out to Citibank, you're giving out a FICO score, that's great. Now Capital One uses something called CreditWise, and unfortunately, every single credit score that Capital One's gonna give you using CreditWise is a Vantage 3.0 that doesn't matter. It's basura, throw it in the trash. It's not, there's no point in even looking at it. Now, for the moment that you've been waiting for, let's talk about the credit scores that lenders truly do see. Now, I'm gonna put it up on the screen and I'm gonna walk you through it step by step so I can really break it down. Now, whenever you see a free FICO score, that's what I call your top general FICO score. Now, you see right there, it's usually a FICO 8. FICO 8 is the most commonly used FICO score out there right now, currently. Now, if you hear anybody saying, oh, FICO 10T is coming, FICO 10T is gonna be used, oh, it's gonna destroy everybody's credit scores. Listen, that is 100% lie. These people have been talking about FICO 10T for four years now. And I wanna clear something up very, very clear about that that in order for an actual FICO score to be used and adapted, lenders have to use it. So if lenders decide we're not using FICO 10T, that doesn't help us get more approvals, they're not gonna use it. So don't worry, don't stress out, FICO 10T is not coming to fruition anytime soon because it's going to mean that car lenders, credit card companies are not going to get as many approvals and they want to get you approved so they can get you on the hook for the interest rates and the financing. Why else would they take a new FICO scoring algorithm that's gonna get them less qualified clients. Yeah, that would just be dumb. So again, remember, the top FICO score that you see for free, as an example, Experian gives you a free credit score. That top score is just a regular generic base top general score. We want to look for our industry specific FICO scores. Now, what is an industry specific FICO score, you ask? Each industry is different. You wanna get a credit card, that's going to be a FICO bank card score. You want to buy a car, that's gonna be a FICO auto score. You want to purchase a home, that's going to be a FICO mortgage score. Those are the three big industries that you need to pay attention to when you're going to apply for any type of lending. Now, which ones are the most commonly used? Whenever you're going to apply for a car, they're going to be looking at your FICO Auto Score 8. It is very, very rare if they use anything else. FICO Auto Score 8 is the number one used auto scoring FICO for any type of auto lending. Now, if you want to get a credit card, you want to pay attention to your FICO Bank Card Score 8. That is the most commonly used FICO score out there. Now, some companies like 
uh, I would say Goldman Sachs for like the Apple card or the GM card, they sometimes pull your FICO 9. Not all the time. It depends on your actual region and where they're pulling it from, which is really interesting. They're not consistent about it. But again, remember, it's always going to be your FICO bank card score 8, or some of them may pull your FICO bank card score 9, which is slowly growing, but it's not there 100%. It, not, it, has, it has not been fully adapted because remember, in order for lenders to actually fully adapt a FICO score, they want something that's going to get them more approvals. Now for mortgage lending, you want to buy a home. They're going to be looking at your FICO mortgage score 2, your FICO mortgage score 4, and your FICO mortgage score 5. All of those are going to pull at the same exact time. And that's what's important to understand. Every single one of these is going to be scored different. Like as an example, let's say my FICO bank card score eight is an, is an 810. And then they pull my FICO score two for a mortgage and that's a 690. You're like, what? It's a huge difference because it's a different recipe. It's a different algorithm. It's a different risk factor is, is how exactly FICO is coming up with that different recipe to give you a different score. And remember, the name of the game here is about risk. And as you can see, a credit card has lower risk considering what you're looking at. Then you're looking at an automobile. That's the next highest risk. And then your biggest risk is purchasing a home because it's a high dollar item. And the sad truth here is if you have like, let's say for instance, a 650 FICO score and a lot of lenders will say, oh, that's not bad. But then when you pull your FICO mortgage score because you want to buy a home, you're going to be well below that 600 mark and you're not going to qualify. You're going to be in the 500s and then you're going to be shocked. You're like, but how is this possible? This is because you're looking at the different industry FICO scores. This is why it's important to understand this and learn it and pass this on to your family your friends save this chart that i put up here pause it and save it and send it to your friends so everyone knows what they're looking at when they're trying to apply for cer certain products for credit now everyone always asks me what do you use mike i use my score iq or i use my fico now the problem with my fico my fico is the king of fico scores hands down there's nothing crazy or wrong about that they are in fact the king of the fico score but understand that my fico is the most expensive expensive version to look at your credit scores. It's going to give you all of your credit scores that you want to look at, but it is in fact going to be the most expensive. You're looking at $39.99 a month or $49.99 a month to see all of your FICO scores depending on your region, which is crazy to me because it could be one price on the East Coast and then a completely different price on the West Coast. And I believe it should be one price all the way across the board and it's not. Let's say you're working on your credit and you're like, should I be using FICO scores? No, don't use FICO scores. Why would you pay that much to see your FICO scores? when your score is going to fluctuate up and down. Your credit score does not matter when you're working on your credit. It's great to see the credit the credit score increases. Yeah, that's important because it's going to motivate you to keep you moving. But understand, you should not pay for your FICO scores while you're in the credit repair process because it can go up, it can go down, it can flatline, nothing can happen, something can happen. It's going to drive you crazy and you're literally paying $40 a month to see your score go up and down. Use the Vantage score while you are working on your credit. And then once you're ready to apply for something, then go get your FICO scores. If you're not actively seeking credit, you're not out there applying for credit cards and all these different types of loans, why would you consistently continue to pay my FICO $40 a month? That makes no damn sense whatsoever. Keep your money, save it, and then wait until you're ready to apply for something and then go see your FICO score. But there is one last player on the table. My score IQ is one of my favorite places to see your industry FICO credit scores because you can see your FICO scores for $1 on a seven day trial. Now, once you sign up, you go to the process, then you go to the credit reports page, go to the credit reports page and then scroll all the way down below your personal information, right underneath your personal information, you're going to see your industry FICO scores. And that's exactly what you want to see. Now, I believe once the seven day trial ends, it's either $24.99 or it's $34.99. Depends on the region. Again, of course, for whatever reason, it's a regional thing. Hands down, this is the only place that you can see your FICO scores for $1 on a seven day trial. Nobody else is going to offer you that that cheap. And this is why I use them more frequently because guess what? I can use it and it's not going to cost me $40. If I use it, it's going to cost me $24.99. That is way cheaper and a way better option. And their credit reporting is broke down also on the same format where 
reports. All three credit reports are lined up right next to each other. It's perfect. There's nothing wrong with it and it's way cheaper. If you would like to use my score IQ to see your true FICO scores, link is going to be pinned at the very top of the comment section and it's going to be in the video description also. So I hope you enjoyed this video and we gave you some clarity on where to find your FICO scores and how Credit Karma is in fact the biggest scam in American history. Now make sure that you watch this next video because it is about what's going on with some banks that you may want to hear about. And if you felt that it brought you some value in this video, make sure that you don't forget and subscribe to increase your credit score.